Right. Because racing's got a lot of uh, <laughs> the dirty uh, secrets dirty of racing. Se- yes, yes. That's all over the world. At, it's not only here. And at that level, so people actually sabotage you. Yes, yes. People do that. I'll just give you a simple example. Take Cholistan for instance. Now these days, when you go there, there were two hundred and fifty thousand people. Two hundred and fifty. That's a quarter of a million yes, people. Yes, because you have a traffic jam. We can't even get into our camps. But the, the economic uh, impact impact is that those people, locals, they come and tell us that your race, our economic generation is for the whole year. One race, one race. Saal se kamal. Pura, pura saal kamal. I lost a tire in last twelve kilometers. So I was doing about one hundred and fifty on three tires, with one you- tire flat. And you drove through the flat tire yeah, to the I end. Yeah, I finished. And you I was still ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I think that's what the whole plan was. Right. To uh, eliminate uh, Benazir Bhutto, so the party falls Listen, apart. Falls apart. You know, so certain people will join certain parties. Certain people will, like it happens. Right. So that was the whole thing behind. It. Welcome everyone to Digitales episode 75. My name is Fezan Sayed, founder and CEO of East River and today I have the name you think of when you think of racing in Pakistan. He's won more championships, more medals than anyone. He knows the racing community. He's built the racing community. He's the father of the racing community. Nader Maxi, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thank you for having me over here. Thank you. It's such an honor and I just want to start by asking you, ke racing me aap aaye kaise? Ye gaadiyon ka aur racing ka shauk shuru kahan se hua? Well, I guess it's built in. It's in the DNA Haan. from my forefathers, you know, they loved cars and so do we. Since we were ten years old, you know, we've been driving. We had since ten car. years old. Yeah, ten years. Old. That was my <laughs> first car. So I had an accident also uh. in that car. But anyways, uh, driving on road and off road. Right. Uh, we were blessed with since the area I represent, Jalmaksi. Right. It's off road. Right. Of course. So you know, we've been driving there. So you know, from early part, you start learning. Right. Uh, right. And. Uh, you know used to have the old jeeps used to race those also right the cj5 cj7s you know all those cj5 uh, jeeps for you those are not even meant for racing <laughs> used to used to have great fun on them yes uh, they could topple easily exactly yes. but anyways i mean this is a, what whatever was available well, yeah. You know, yeah yeah used to do that toyotas yeah toyota cars you know so, so that's how so age of 10 yes. so you have i mean you basically what you're saying is ke racing me off roading me koi bhi aa jaye you have a time advantage no one can beat well uh, cuz you've done this yes, for the last yes yes uh, that's true that's true because uh, experience does matter a lot see time is everything this is everything that that i agree with you but uh, you know it's adaptability you could be racing for 40 years right and you still don't get it and uh, actually to be honest you could race all your life and you still learn right. that's what i'm doing. Right. The last race I had in Cholistan, I am still learning from it. You know, I mean, still learning. Yeah, you still learn. Right. You can never say that you you know everything. Yeah. That's dumb. You That's the say. right approach. Yeah, you need to learn. Right. Even if there's a younger guy, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, you 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 watch his lines. He might be doing better than you. Right. So you adapt. So you adapt. You adapt, and you know, you get better. Uh, right. If you think that you have everything, and you know, you know everything, you will. You're in for it. You're in for it. <laughs> And so you started racing. You started driving at the age of ten. You're driving in your village in Jhal. And w- at what point did you say, "Okay, now I want to turn this into some sort of a sport and have the first rally uh, championship?" Because uh, rallying का जो concept था कैसे शुरू हुआ था? Okay, uh, to be honest, uh, rallying uh, in Pakistan, we used to drive off road, race with with each other and all that. But you know, it was nothing uh, formal. Formal to what? Haan. What is it now? uh i was like 19 20 years old i left for the us right over there you know i had the same passion but i didn't really off road over there okay like track racing and kart racing and all that you know one the so go karts uh, karting uh. karting is actually the the, f- the, f- the the yeah basic uh, thing to know so you have to start with go karts i think if if the younger younger lot you know they're listening to me started with karting you will get right. really good It helped me in my right. off-road racing also. Karting helped you in off-road yes, racing. Yes, yes. You see, completely that. different uh, know, environment. But, but, but you know the lines, you know. Then right. You, you, you basically change the lines. Right. But you have the concept. 
right so you have to follow the lines and you have to keep the momentum yes, yes, and the speed yes, yes. not hit the brakes so uh, i went to the us when i came back uh, i think in the 90s uh, it started happening over here they had they used to have informal races here in other words ek saal hua do saal hua then wo gharon mein hota tha ha gharon mein tha the track tha wahan track tha wahan pe i think we had a go kart race over there once i went there Thik but hai. i used to be abroad so you know right. I, i wasn't here that long right um, we had an off road race in tata that was the first one uh, this is in the 90s 90s exactly uh. even though they had in the 90s i think they had uh, thar and they had uh, gwadar but i wasn't here they had thar and gwadar in the 90s yeah, yeah, okay the 90s also but you see the problem was that uh, even though it was organized and uh, i was uh, i'm forgetting his name the, the guy who uh, he's really good at uh, organizing all all the old races and, right um aga um anyways he's gone to canada now right so he uh was he had organized all these races okay but the problem was that you know it ran for a year or two years and then it know, just like, stopped like cholestan was i think 94 and 95 then started in 2005 so 10 years later yes. was it a problem of sponsorships money yes exactly putting it, you see like i was telling you yeah. before informally yeah. that's the problem you know money cars uh, things bringing in nothing's over here everything's imported everything's imported so in 2004 i was out for about 6 years politically right nothing to do with racing right so when i came back um, after uh, musharraf's thing uh, so uh, that was 2000 the first race took place at uh, cholistan i missed that 2004 2004 i think or 5 right and then it was jhal so, so you you started jhal so yeah no my brothers actually to be honest it was asad uh zafar um uh, amir was here and these people put it all together and right. they started because they went to cholistan because they went to cholistan and they saw there and then there were a lot of problems the first right. race was the military there so you know right uh, it was unorganized right right so th- they said why not let's have it over here since we have the same terrain terrains bulk better okay, better terrains uh, more, more variety more variety so they had the first race there then the second race then i was here so then we started then i looked at it from a different angle right i said it, it, you can't just have it locally like that we need to expand it to the whole of pakistan right and start making it bigger right but again when you start talking about making it bigger you need sponsors you know right. every race is like that which we didn't <clears throat> the reason was that uh, all of, uh, the fraternity was very small and uh, we thought you see every sport has to have a fan following of course it does you know, otherwise there's no sport otherwise there's no otherwise sport you, otherwise it's the same thing you're driving for yourself you know, exactly and you're just having fun but when it starts getting to this people have to watch it right so we were very skeptical ke pata nahi you know uh, people of pakistan would like this kind of sport or not theek hai so when we started going into the uh, off road racing and started going into the desert areas which are beautiful i think right. the best areas we have in the whole of the world absolutely agree so people started liking it and people started coming and it worked both ways meaning uh, raceway also right uh, watching and having fun but economically it generated a lot of economic activity in those uh, poor areas Achha, which achha. we didn't actually thought of right. to be honest that just came with it because then I'll just give you a simple example. Take Cholistan for instance. Now these days, when you go there, there are over two hundred fifty thousand people. Two hundred and fifty. That's a quarter of a million yes, people. Yes, because you have a traffic jam. We can't even get into our camps, so we don't go out of our camps. Wow. Last two days. Wow. There's a traffic jam. Go see the road. It used to be a single road. Yeah, I remember the single road. They yeah. They made a double road now, and they 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 make an extra track because there's oh, so much traffic. Oh wow. What happens when so many people show up? the local people over there they built homes they rent them out right like kuch nahi tha pe ha pehle to bilkul shamiyane lagte the now you can get homes over there really yeah you can rent homes out i know a lot of people that rent homes out that didn't have places there right people come to see the sport they rent out then there are over i think over 2000 camps over there yeah yeah there's a lot the whole desert already. is lit up the whole desert yeah but ye this is a fall fall back meaning ke hum to jaate hain to race ha yeah. but the e- economic uh, impact impact is that those people locals they come and tell us ji ke your race our economic generation is for the whole year 
एक रेस एक पूरे रेस। साल से कमाते पूरा हैं। साल कमा लेते हैं वाओ तो ये तो फिर हमें हर हर जगह में करानी चाहिए Right from that angle. No, you don't. Yeah, because people have money there. But over here, people, the poor people that has have stalls and tea and eggs and food and all. Yeah. Ask them what happens to them. So there is a big economic impact, and so Cholistan obviously is the biggest race. Yes. It's the highest number of participants. Yes. I think it's close to 150 cars that yes. register. Right. Jhal has always been around between 90 and 100. 70, 80, 90, just depending on. Depending on the year. Yes. Then you added locations like Sarfranga. up north thatta then there are uh, ice related like cold weather racing also yes. so where else can you have racing throughout pakistan i mean okay, is okay. there a lot of opportunity uh, yes now the thing is this that you know the southern part of pakistan we have a window of about 4 to 5 months so let's say october november to november to Feb. Uh, march november to march march we race so that it's not too hot at that time yes because you can't race in the desert right in the summers it gets too hot now this is what we are trying to most of the tracks are southern tracks we are trying to have tracks that we can go the last the next 7 uh, 8 months that there's no racing right nothing from march to november yes so sarfaranga is one of them right that that got in it's the highest coldest desert that we have in the world right that we are racing even the cars when we drive there it makes a big difference like because the oxygen levels one, are one lower one third of the power goes away it goes away because exact yeah. combustion yes. needs oxygen yes so all these things are matter so we are trying to to generate tracks where um, uh those months yeah we can uh, the dead months yes we found out one other good thing for karachi uh, which we are doing now yeah. we're going to have a night rally on the 15th a uh, night rally night rally Uh, we had the hub rally now right so we're going to have about a 15 16 km track right and we're going to start doing that now now the thing is this when you say night rally and when it's a coastal area you can do it all year round because the weather is decent very, uh, very well yeah. you've got you've got the wind yes so there's no dust you know the, the dust goes that's away that's true and it's cooler at night where would you have this in this we're doing it uh, at the same hub rally where at the hub rally location location but we got to cut the track down a little bit it's the first First time you want to make sure everything right. runs properly. You know? Right, right. I think it's going to be a great event. You know? That's amazing. And when are you having this event? Fifteenth. Fifteenth of uh, next month. Fifteenth of next month. Yes. Oh, very cool. In Ramzan, we're going to go. We're going to go open a fast there. Right. And we're going to arrange. And then race, dinner, have dinner. Sari and come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So this is amazing. You've made this a whole industry. I mean, you got involved. You got the community excited. you know a lot of young people are getting into it and then it's gotten very professional um i mean i i came to jhal and i raced in 2014 then i did cholistan i've done cholistan twice and gawadar once i've not been as consistent but the experience was amazing i remember my first race tell me about your first race that you ever had do you remember that race well first race we had were well, we young in cars yeah in your very first race yeah in cars and i had an accident also oh yeah what happened which car was it it's a corolla it was a corolla before yeah i was i think 11 years old Should oh wow racing, but yeah anyways uh that's part of it you know you learned that way yeah i learned that way first time so you know you have what, what was the lesson you took away as an 11 year old so you have to be careful you can't right. you can't just you know make stupid mistakes you know. but even it, as it cost you and somebody else also exactly but even as a professional race driver i mean a lot of people think you know you've had so many years of experience you're a professional race driver you won't make mistakes but i remember i think it was a uh, 7 8 years ago here in the phase 8 track you had an incident with the evo and with uh, with the evo flipped over that's after that 74 yeah that was the next accident i had after 70 really <laughs> tell me what happened on that when that evo I, flipped I, over to be please. honest i think i kind of half a blacked out i wasn't well that day okay. i shouldn't have done what i did actually uh we went i wasn't feeling well we went around finished the race right and then these three guys went so i said okay let me go you know try to catch them right so i got in my car they had already left it was asad right. asan and another uh, navid right so they were ahead so i caught them but my mistake was when i sat in the car and i wanted to get to them i was trying to put my seat belt and i never put it see these are things you learn That's, you did not have your seat belt no, on that's the reason i got hurt otherwise there were there was no problem wow so okay. it's my mistake right 
and even as i mean as a as a race driver seat belt is the first thing that we I'm, think of. that's what i'm saying right. got, that's why i'm saying in yeah. the last minute you learn yeah you always yeah. Learn. there's a nil nil thing that costed me and how the accident happened was there's a roundabout yeah. everybody takes from the left and there was a right side also right. so i took it from the right i've been taking it from the right i think i just clipped it a little bit and uh, and those speeds you clipped the roundabout roundabout oh, so the then it just side. took the car no, no, no. It, i clipped the left side yeah and then obviously the roundabout was like this to uh, yeah. go straight yeah that that little uh, bend that was there it clipped it and it went off the bend and there were there were big ditches over there oh so it went through that i kept it straight right and it went back onto the uh, onto the track and it started sliding and then at the back there was a uh, footpath it hit that and it flipped oh wow i got it back actually. right but i to be honest when it when i clipped it at that time i don't remember i think i kind of blacked out or something i mean that's that's what i feel so even though you got the car back in control yeah. the a footpath which is unpredictable Foot, yeah, it, it went in reverse it, oh, went, it went in so reverse it, it started sliding it went in reverse and hit it and it flipped and because it. you didn't have your seat belt on that's why i i hit my uh, I had a, a whiplash yep. and I cut my ear. Wow. Wow. So it's a mistake. It's a mistake and it happens to even yes, the professional yes, race car yes, drivers. So I mean, you know, for to avoid mistakes like these, you know, I think you know, when they the young kids are getting in their cars and they're excited about racing and you know, they're like eager and they just want to float it and go. You must have a routine before your races, right? Because you can't be a consistent winner without a routine. What is your routine to win like before well, before a race? <laughs> uh to be consistent obviously your machine has to be uh you know a at 100 points. Right. Uh, you know it's supposed to run. Right. Uh, otherwise you know you could be a good driver but if it's not doing anything what good is it? Right. So that's one of the main things uh that we make sure we go through a lot of exercise. Do you have a standardized checklist? Yes, yes. and plus. And, and plus. plus. And plus. We go over and over and still I mean I've had problems last Cholestan race 5 kilometers down I mean I was ahead and uh you know suddenly the power goes out and there was some I'm still trying to figure out what happened right because there was some rubber type thing in my tank that just choked the filter so I ran out there was no no fuel coming you know right I just lost the race but the car was fine yeah but anyway I think that's something more than the checklist uh, we're still looking at it. Right. Because racing's got a lot of uh, <laughs> the dirty uh, secrets dirty of racing. Se- yes, yes. That's all over the world. At, it's not only here. And at that level, all over the world. Uh, really? Yeah, all over. The, I've seen it. All over the world, it's like. So people actually sabotage you. Yes, yes. People do that. Wow. Yeah. So how do you, when you're doing your checklist and inspecting your car, how do you inspect for sabotage? Well, we try to make sure there's security there and all that. So you need to have your car secured. Yes, we try to do it. Right. Do. Everybody does that. I mean, it's. I don't know here but internationally there there there's a park for me there right. you put your car there nobody you can't even touch it yourself once right. it goes there we don't have that those facilities here but right. uh, we try to do it ourselves right yeah and what about in terms so you've checked the car you made sure the car has not hopefully been sabotaged what about your own sort of head space how do you get yourself calm and relaxed before a race because uh, i mean a race night yeah, you know yeah. you're you get all nervous and tingly uh, i keep on trying to run it through my head you know uh, all the uh, recies that we've done yeah the turns where you, yeah. you know what you could do these days uh, i was i think the last guy that got onto the uh, tech stuff so the gps yeah. and the uh, data I, and- gps was in my head all, all throughout <laughs> but it was making a difference to the other guys because uh, you know when you have a long race right and there are 500 turns 1000 turns yeah. you know 200 jumps You would remember those? I was trying to remember those and I was ahead but what happened was they were catching up because of the technology. Yes, because let's say even I, I let off the gas for half a second. Yeah. They don't. Because, because they, they they know. They knew, they knew what's ahead. Right. You see? So, so and that half a second makes up for a you, big distance. You add up? You add up those half a seconds over here exactly. You see? So then I had to get on to that. Too. Right. <laughs> and that again made a difference. You know, okay so so it's become very competitive now which is very nice right it's very nice for the sport good and so you you've gotten involved in the technology side you know you inspect your car is there anything you do to keep yourself calm during a race because a lot of times i mean it's very human nature right i mean you're competing and then suddenly you see your competitor right behind you and sometimes you know in the racing they're flashing you and they're honking you to put pressure on you 
in that situation, how do you still run your race and not get influenced by, you know, the guy who's really up you at that I point? I think the worst thing you can do is if the guy has caught you, yeah. you know, there's three, four, five minutes gap. Yeah. He's faster than you. Yeah. If you're going to not let him go by and you're going to start driving, that's the most stupidest thing you can do. Really? Yeah. You'll make a mistake. You'll make a mistake and you'll get into an accident or do something because he's faster than you. Yeah, he's After, caught up the distance. He's caught up. Let him go. Right. Let him go. Try to follow him. You might become a little better. Really? Uh, yeah. I advise that. Do that. It is useless to not let... That's because of ego. Right. Not, we have a lot of big egos. Drivers do all over the world. Of course they do. You know, they think, oh man, how come he's caught? Me? Yeah. That's a fact. He's yeah. faster than you. Yeah. And that's three minutes is a long yeah. distance, you so know. He, he is faster than he's caught. Yeah. Let him go. Yeah, hota hai bada. Uh. You're trying to do something to penalize people that don't do that because it becomes dangerous for both of them. Yes, it he does. He tries to overtake. Yes. You're not letting him overtake. Yes. And then it becomes uh, either we have a GoPro now, we tell them, you know, to record it. Right. You know, so the guy's not letting you, we'll penalize him. We've told them that. Right. Or we're coming up with a thing that it uh, internationally uh, beeps. When okay. you're in 100 meters, right, right, right. start beeping. And if you even say, hey, I didn't see him. Right. Normally, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. And they do see him. Of course, they see them. <laughs> yeah. So, that's part of racing, man. Right. Yeah, so, you have to let the ego go. Maybe if even... your ego is there, you've had it. So, racing, you can't have an ego. No, you be... Why? What, what, what role does the ego play if you're racing? Why? You're the best. Everybody thinks he's the best. And then what happens? And then what happens? You get into an accident. <laughs> <laughs> All fours are up. <laughs> That show, that's the worst thing you can do to yourself. You learn always. Right. You know? And that's the first thing. If the guy's caught you up, he's faster. Man, let him go. Right. You know, I mean. No, and that's good advice. Let him go because you might learn something from his lines. Yes, yes. See how he's taking the corners. I would do that. Right. I would do that. You know? Right. Yeah. Interesting. And so, you've, you've, you've checked the car. You know, you've, you've obviously avoided sabotage. You say, you know, use technology. Put your ego aside. Um, in addition to this, if someone's getting into this right now, and let's say they have limited means, because I mean, I'm seeing it's getting very competitive. investment And a person has done all of these things, the basics. How can they get into this race with the limited means they have? Okay, that's the reason uh, we've, we've created classes, you know. I mean, uh, before we had very few classes, and this is what used to happen. The top runners... We're they, just... They just used to blow them away. So, what do we do? Right. So, we figured this out. Eventually, we've had a stock class now. Right. Before, it used to be A, B, C, D by uh, right. CCs. Right. We had... And uh, it used to be just four classes. That that included the pro class and the stock class. You know, people that... Didn't of course. Money, they would bring their vehicles like that. So, it started uh, affecting uh, the race uh, by numbers for a few years. So, we figured out there's something wrong here. So a few people would come. Yeah, because they. What's the use of running, let's say, a stock car with my car? You know, I mean, you, no, can't. you, you can't. You can't win. No, you can't, and it's not fair. And it's not fair. So what we did was we created a stock class. Theke. So we've got now four classes for the stock with the same CCs. Right. And uh, we've, uh, in the stock, we've got uh, uh, restrictions. Obviously, we have the safety thing. You have to right. Cage, uh, fire extinguishers, medical kit, everything. You can put racing seats, harness. That's safety. Right. But within shocks, within towers, you know, which way the technical stuff comes to, to get faster. You can't do any no, of that. No engine modifications, no, 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 no suspension no. mods. No, suspension, you can just put between Bo the brackets, you can yeah. put uh, different shock. Right. But you can't alter that. Because right. race cars, you have to alter that. Yes, you do. You, know, you need the long travel shocks, yes. exactly. So you can't do that. So, right. So that means less money. Okay. You see, so then it's competitive between them. So you can get in. But the problem is that even if, let's say, someone with limited means gets in and races, there's no concept of sponsorship yet. Okay, if there's a good driver and he wants to bump up into the next class, unless he's funding his own way, he can't go to the next class. Agreed, because this is what's the drawback in Pakistan. Uh, that's what, in the beginning, we were thinking of, uh, you know, how are we going to generate all this? Because at the end of the day, the companies have to come in. Right. To uh, pick up good drivers. And they give, they basically sponsor and they give their cars and uh, the driver is supposed to drive it. Right. And all over the world. All over the world, it's like that. Exactly. Your Dakar is like that. Exactly. Know, everybody's sponsored. But you need uh, viewership, audiences to watch that race. So, so that was the thing. Let's say, uh, why would a company come and sponsor me when there's only 
200 people watching exactly it's useless it's useless but on dakar a billion people watches it so they'll put in millions right. of dollars okay because the name's flashed right this is what we are trying to do here and eventually it has caught it in the beginning we had a lot of problems right still it's not there like the sponsors we uh, they might sponsor the race you know let's say right we're organizing a race you obviously need money to organize it right so the event sponsorship is 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 becoming better because of 250000 yes, people yes. showing up now we want it to come to the to, to the drivers to the driver so level. they sponsor the vehicles so now right. we we are trying to work on that so that's where you know people that don't have the means right. they're better drivers than us yeah they get sponsored you know and do you think that there is um, a market for people to view pakistan racing in pakistan or even outside I mean, would people no, watch this on TV no, I, or in sports channels? Yes, that's now we are actually making a federation. We've got the Sindh Motorsports Association, Punjab, Balochistan, Frontier. Uh, now we are going for the federal, so it's going to be registered as a as a sport. Okay. So you know we get uh, basically uh, help from the government also. Right. Uh, and you know obviously that helps when you know the the, the national institutions. Uh, they 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 come in right. start helping they start helping uh, and then obviously we're trying to filter this to the drivers so they get sponsored the vehicles get sponsored okay there is a viewership now i think if you put this uh, you make a whole segment of it right and you know geo super or something good a lot of people will watch it no and even with i think the uh, park wheels culture that has picked up i mean yes. over the last i'd, I'd say there's probably covid exactly you know so there's a whole community now there's a, a avid following they're putting a lot of a lot of content out there on cars on racing yes. the community is developed so you're right i think there is a market for it um and even with the proliferation of these go karting tracks Islamabad has one now. Lahore has a nice one. Karachi has one yes. that we were at last Bilkul. night, and so I think that's where you will start getting these drivers yes. to seed in. Absolutely, this this is the basic. This is the home where you start uh, uh, racing, you start learning, and then you go from there. So we were talking about uh, starting at the karting level, and that's with the with the karting tracks now in Lahore, Islamabad, Karachi. We'll have a lot of drivers seeding into this race uh, and the racing community. But one question that always comes up. um when anyone watches racing is it the car or is it the driver that wins the race both is it equal parts of both or is it mostly well, the car mostly well, the driver uh, if your cars at par uh, you know and it's, do- it's doing what it's supposed to then obviously it's up to you can a driver make a car that's not at par do things to catch yes, up to yes. how, how is the how does that yes, work the, yes but it, to a certain extent okay you know to a certain extent. like so give me an example of that give me an example of when your car was maybe limited or was limping or some issue but you managed to get the most out of it to stay or get a podium yeah i've had trouble I've, i mean that's part of racing of course uh, you, you know you, that happens to you but uh, if you use your head you know like i, I lost gears you know you've lost gears in the middle of the race yes yes So then I had like second and fourth. You, know. you didn't have second and fourth. No, I had second and fourth. So you no first, no third. No third. So you know it depends. Uh, you know on the track, Cholistan especially. So oh, if yeah. you're in fourth, in yeah. sand, you know it becomes it drags. Yes. So obviously your uh, your timings get yep. get hit because the other guys, you know, they're powering through. through. So, so how did you navigate so, that? Well, we 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 managed. We managed and we got there. Um, where you had to use second for basically what happens is uh you in, in when you get into a situation like that uh you need to make sure that the vehicle doesn't stall i mean it keeps on going okay you know, so it's all momentum it's all momentum you know, right because uh, you don't have that gear to, of course. to get it going right uh, so these things you know you start playing in H- how you're going to keep the momentum up the turns that are coming you know how you're going to take them you know, right. might have to cut them you have to go through the bushes if you So have. now you're planning that far ahead you're racing here right now yeah. but your mind is yeah, already yeah. at the two three turns ahead yes. so well how, how you going to manage wow. it because if you don't have the gears you're going to yeah. slow down so you know you obviously it's adaptability yeah. suddenly you know you have, that has to kick in yeah because it's not doing what it's supposed to do yeah your vehicle it sounds like running a business for an entrepreneur <laughs> a startup business have the same problem yes. suddenly the business is not doing what it's supposed yeah, to do to start and you have to think out ahead i need to keep this business going you know I, it's not giving me the result i wanted to what should i do yes. that sometimes you get a flat 
you know, you have to think, okay, should I change the flat or should I make it, you know, if it's close by? Right. Uh, you know, this, so you'll drive on the flat? Flat, yeah. Finished on, on just rims. <laughs> you finished <laughs> with no tires. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, you have to adapt to that, you know. Right. But if you stop and you change. You, you lose know, time. You lose time. Uh, is, is it, uh, if you're too far off, obviously right. you'll have to do that. But if you're close by. Then you might as well just power through. Just, yeah. But obviously in the vehicle, I've done it. Right. I've done it in Cholistan. I, I was, I think last year, I lost a tire and last 12 kilometers. So I was doing about 150 on three tires with one you, tire flat. And you drove through the flat tire to yeah, the end. Yeah, I finished. And you I was still ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if I had stopped to change it, yeah, because I lost my brakes right. and it slid and it went and hit a big bu bush and the tire came off. It was 13 kilometers off. We thought, should we? We shouldn't be. I said, no, let's go. So when you say we, so, you, so it's it's my navy also. I was going to come to that. Your navy, you've had the Co same navy, your navigator, yes. your co-driver for a long time. Yes. In rallying, so race road racing is different. You don't have a navigator there; it's just you driving. But in in rallying, how important is the role of the navigator? If you have a good uh, co-driver, a navy, you've got it made. What does the co-driver do in the race? Because they're not driving. What do they? No, their their job is to look up ahead. Okay, I as a race driver, I'm not looking more than hundred meters or probably fifty meters. So yeah. you're looking. You're yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking. They're there. Yeah, they, he needs to tell me. Okay, this you've got a hard left or a you know soft left or a fast. You know, he needs to tell me that. Right. So then you know I set up the car that way. Right. Or if there's a little hill, it's straight. Take the jump. Go. Or there's a turn. If you go fast, you go you know land and the track's going on the right. Right. What happens then? So this is very important. I mean, you can kill yourself. No? So you're so basically your ha hands your are, uh, your life is his hand. yeah he's the main guy. So he's basically got yeah. notes down yes, yes. for every turn, every turn and he's just calling it out. Calling it out. And that's the, the, his job. And does he adapt to the way you're driving and your speeds? If he notices you're sort of lower, lower on energy, because that also happens. Sometimes you lose energy yeah. in the middle of a race. Yes. So you know? you're slow, so he'll tell you, you know. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. That hasn't happened with me yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is that uh, your navy has to tell you, and uh, if he doesn't, if he doesn't give you the right calls, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah. So he's the he's the most important guy. I, think. I remember my first race. My na my navy was a guest we've had on Muni, and he's like hard left. Sorry, hard right, hard right. Oops, that's a left. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I remember. Do Luckily, that. there was wide open space. And we were able to navigate through it. But, uh, you know, it was my, I remember it was my first race. And in the middle of the race, I started feeling really hungry and thirsty. So he's like feeding me biscuits while I'm <laughs> raising my car. Yes. Because, you know, you got to keep your energy up. Keep your energy up. Yeah, and otherwise, it's, you get, it, it drains you. And it's, I didn't realize how draining a, a race can be. Because technically, you're just driving. No, you're sitting. No, no, it's, it's very it took hard a, on you. It you took a week to cages. recover. Yeah. Because your mind, mind, and you know, it's 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 intense. It's intense. Uh, I would suggest before you race, you know, you need to take in a. I don't know. Everybody reacts uh, differently, but I take a banana and dates, right, you know, to keep the energy level up, right, and then you, you're optimal. And then you're optimal. Exactly. Yeah. You exactly. need to be optimal. Yeah. If you're racing. Yeah, you and the way, it. because your mind is also at that point operating in a way where it's it's obviously competing. But then there's also a fear built in that if I make a mistake, yeah. it could be a big mistake, big mistake in the middle of a desert where yes. there's very few rescue services. Yes. You know, because I remember one time, and that's the other challenge is how do you rescue in the middle of a desert? Okay. it all Because you get on, stranded. Yes, it all depends on the tracks. But what we do is, you know, uh, uh, every certain areas that we know uh, accessible, right. uh, we put... Uh, ambulances over there okay and uh we've got wirelesses right and uh you know uh, most of the cars that we have uh where the cell phone works is fine uh you know if let god forsake something happens they call in and you know we're there so it is an issue a and ever uh, any anywhere in the world the yeah. best thing is if you have a, a heli that's the best thing you know right like in dakar and all you know they go they have a heli yeah pick, pick it pick the guy up and all but has anything serious ever happened no we've had major roles uh but the thing is that we make sure nobody goes out and races uh, without uh, the tech team approving them right. in the safety gear. And we've had like seven, eight rolls out of the car and the guys have just walked out. 
just walked out walked nothing out, else out, just bruised up a little yeah. bit of, a little cut or something you know i right. mean those kind of roles could kill you yeah wow so you were very very focused on making sure safety yeah. is taken no care of no racing without that no racing no without that i'm going to switch gears uh, figuratively and literally um you've had a stint in politics you don't give me the vibe of someone you know who's i mean obviously you know given jhal and your uh, place in balochistan you don't give me the vibe of a typical politician why did you try politics and then why did you step out of it well i'm still in it to be honest um, i mean you're still serving your community yes, yes. and you know but you got into it from a let's say a ministerial level and no it's 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 uh, basically the areas we represent uh it's it's a very technical area we we part basically from balochistan and that that uh, flows into sin right okay so we are on both sides the family uh, so the family is both on both sides both sides yes like me and my brother amir we elected from the sin side right members of the national provincial assembly my other two brothers khalid and uh, tariq they are from balochistan from the balochistan yeah. side uh, national assembly members and provincial assembly so it's 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 invisible boundary right but the area is the same you know so you okay. got people on both sides uh i was i think the youngest member in the assembly uh, right in, uh, in 85 when i came back from states i think two months before the elections uh, yeah we had the elections they were uh, non party okay so i kind of got uh, elected nearly unopposed you know uh, okay and then uh, when the party system uh was introduced uh, the first time i joined was uh uh benazir bhutto uh in 19 just before 1988 okay so uh, right before she got elected yes uh, and uh since then i've been people's party with her throughout you had a more active role in i'd say the late 2010s or 2008 i'd say but yeah. then you took a more passive role why why did you decide to uh, well it's it's politics mm. it's, it's politics uh, uh after 2008 uh benazir uh, she was killed um and uh from 2008 now it's 2023 uh the first 5 years were very tough without her right getting the party back online right uh, i think the to get things going it was very tough and uh, asif zardari is a great friend of mine too and he sticks with his people there's no doubt about that and his friends but uh, i think he was the main uh, pillar and i was one of the people that i told him you know if you are there we are there right otherwise things are going to disintegrate and right. i think that's what the whole plan was right to uh, eliminate uh, benazir bhutto so the party for the part falls apart you know so certain people will join certain parties certain people will, like it happens right so that was the whole thing behind it and uh, thank god uh, you know he st- stood his ground mm. and uh, you know we stood with him and we still with him doing it obviously there are ups and downs right uh, we've gone through uh, since 2013 uh, i think when the other elections took place uh, we've been in government out of government you know federal government Uh, whether it's the establishment or the judiciary you know it's still going on it's still today it's literally right now still, <laughs> still going on and uh, i think at the end of the day um, this is personal right you know i'm talking about personal nothing to do with uh, people's party agenda or a pdm agenda or some you know every party has an agenda and we follow that right but personally i would this is how i feel and uh, times i stay back Uh, is that you know this country has given us a lot right and uh, it's still giving us but we need to figure our act out yeah and uh, give something back first to the people of pakistan and uh, to this country and uh, should draw a line somewhere all the institutions should draw a line including us inclu- including the other institutions that are pillars of pakistan and i think we should get together and um, fix this country right now what we are going through is an economic challenge right uh, you know we've got everything else to be blessed with everything this country right is absolutely but it's us uh, that are not uh, doing the job the way it's supposed to be done and uh, 
if you look at Pakistan from from the from the era uh, economically, obviously we've we've progressed a lot. Also, there's no doubt about that. But suddenly, you know, there's a big dip. Uh, whether it's uh, a big dip financially, uh, whether it's uh, you know from a, for a common person from getting flour to eat, right, or fuel to put in his bicycle, you right, know, or making ends meet, salaried class, right. You know, I mean, suddenly you get up in the morning and there's a 20% inflation. Absolutely. Like your pay is the same. Your so what are you going to do? You know, so these things are affecting uh, everybody. So what is it that's preventing this, the pillars, the ins- the pillar institutions to getting to, is it, like you said in racing, you should not have an ego. Is it the same here? Yes. The ego is there. Uh, the thing is that I want to run the country, you know, that's fine. But if you're running the country and doing something better, then you should acknowledge it, even if I'm sitting in the opposition. Like you said about the driver, if the other driver is right behind you, that means he's driving better. Let him go and yeah. learn from him. Yeah, but then it works both ways. Okay, if, if uh, I'm sitting in the opposition and I recognize you, okay, that you're running the government and you know, you're doing c- certain things, you're doing good, it should be. And we, we should be together on that so it builds the country. But then from you also it should come back to me that way. Hmm. So it can't be one way. No, it can't be. So that's the problem. So do you think it's because there is no maturity in the politicians? Is it a lack of maturity? Well, I think everybody's mature. It's just uh, in your head, hmm. you know, that uh, whether you want to get together or not, you know, and right. certain times it's, it's not happening. Right. It's not happening, but it's affecting then the country. You mentioned uh, kids and racing and then you also talked about your time in America. Today, this morning, I was um, giving a lecture at uh, a local college and I asked them a question. I ask them this every time. So if I give you a passport to America right now, but you can't come back, how many of you will take it? I, I want to say 80, 90 percent raise their hands. And I said, but you that's, can't that's, come back. That's not good. I said, but you can't come back, see your parents. You get the passport, you're out. Literally, they kept their hands up. Right. And I'm looking at them and I said, but why? And all, a lot of them raised their voices and said, look, what, is, what are we getting out of this place? There's inflation, there's no employment, there's no opportunity, there's nothing. You know, and we don't see a future. And the worst part was, forget that, fine. We don't see a future. The leaders of this country are not showing us a future. That's sad. That's you know, sad. and so the question then we ask is, okay, if we don't have a future, then why should we stay here? Agreed. So who's going to create that future for us? Yeah, but that's a, that's a big drain on our country. All the, all the youth... All the people that are supposed to take over right and the brain if they go out and they're serving another country what's going to happen to this country so that's let, sad that's, let, i'm saying that's that's very bad let me use a parallel in racing you were one of the old guard of racing right you still are you're sort of the one that everyone looks up to and then your brother um uh, your brothers in fact both of them and ronnie for example you know these are the old guard they've been around racing for a while yes. Over the last eight, 10 years, the younger racers have come up and they're doing really well. You know, they've performed really well. They've won a lot of races. You know, I noticed in the racing community, the old guard has taken sort of a, we're here, we're here to support, guide and coach, but it's your time now. Come on, you guys come in the front. You know, and I'm I'm seeing that, right? I see it in the fraternity with you guys, but shouldn't that be happening at a national level yes. to run this country. Yes. I mean, the old guard has had its time. Yes, it's going to go. That's what we're trying to do. Now we're trying to open up a uh, an institution also that we can, you know, basically teach. Right. And, and obviously they're going to take over. Right. That's what we're going to do. We can't be there forever. Nobody can be there forever. But if the so, young all leave <laughs> yeah, in the so meantime. Who, who are you going to teach? <laughs> who, who are you going to teach? Exactly. And so there's a small timeline, I think, that if it's missed... You miss the potential future leaders. I agree. I agree. And then you you got you got people that are left again to run the country, which are not not which don't have it in them. Which don't have it, yeah. Uh, that, that and then we end up in the same problem. Same problem. So what's the way out? We need to get together and serve this country. We who, need to, we need who, to, who will be the person that gets everyone together in the same room? God knows that. <laughs> God knows that. But I hope somebody does. And, uh, you know, we let go things and, and, and work to serve this to serve people and, the, and this country. Right. And make it strong, which we right. are not right now. 
That's true, Nader Bhai. And I hope it all happens and I hope it happens soon. There's a lot of potential here. I mean, not just uh, in the racing community, but uh, nationally in terms of pretty much everything that we do. Um, thank you again for taking the time out and uh, wish you the best of luck for the upcoming night race. And hopefully this year, I will finally make my way back in and start, uh, you know, racing again. Because I think the race last night of the go-karting, when we were racing together, we kind of lit the fire back up again. <laughs> I hope you come back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode of Digitail. Subscribe if you like the channel mm -hmm. and we will have more for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>